Paul Bernardo spent more than two hours explaining why he should be released from this maximum security prison into the community. One of Canada's most infamous criminals told the parole board panel that he would never reoffend. He said, it devastates me what I did in the past. I cry all the time. What I did was dreadful. Bernardo blamed the crimes on low self-esteem. The lawyer for the families of the victims took issue with that. When someone like Paul Bernardo talks about, well, what, what, my, what my trigger is, is, uh, is low self-esteem. I mean, just take that by itself. In light of his, his history, um, there isn't an expert in the world of psychiatry and psychology that wouldn't tell you that his explanations were, were proof positive that he represented a very serious threat to public safety. The mothers of Leslie Mahaffey and Kristen French had to endure sitting just meters from Bernardo to give their impact statements. Donna French said, for those who say time heals, I say there is nothing further from the truth when the wound affects the entire core of a family. Both mothers had the same message that Bernardo needs to spend the rest of his life in jail. One of the women he sexually assaulted as a Scarborough rapist was there too. She says the attack left her a shell of her former self. Bernardo had nothing to say to any of them. There's never been an apology by Paul Bernardo. There's been never any indication whatsoever of remorse. And uh, other than, you know, I think some self-pity that we saw today. Now that Bernardo's life sentence has passed the 25-year mark, the parole board is required to review his incarceration every two years. The parole board members did reaffirm the appropriateness of Bernardo having been declared a dangerous offender, and so there's no set date for the end of his sentence, meaning he could very well take his last breath at this prison. Ron Charles, CBC News, Bath, Ontario. As you heard in their victim impact statements, the mothers of Leslie Mahaffey and Kristen French described the parole process as gut-wrenching. Here's how Debbie Mahaffey put it. Preparing this statement has not been cathartic. It is not healing. It is invasive to re-examine the past years of harm and heartache that we have experienced and worked so hard to accept. She adds, this parole hearing process rips apart all the healing we've worked so hard to achieve and replaces the beautiful, protected memories of Leslie's life with us with familiar terror and uncertainty. So is the current parole system unfair to families of victims? We're joined in studio by Toronto lawyer Joseph Newberger, an experienced criminal lawyer in Toronto. In fact, you have clients who have spent a long time in prison and then seeking parole. Why should somebody like Paul Bernardo even get a hearing like this? Because it's very important for a democracy to have mechanisms for people, even convicted of heinous crimes, to be able to apply for parole and some form of release. It, it, it's that maxim. A society is judged by the way we treat our offenders, and it's extremely important that we have a rule of law that allows that type of access. It was pretty clear to a lot of people, and certainly the, the board made it clear yes. within a short period of time that they weren't going to give parole to Bernardo. You've actually written a textbook yes. on offenders and how dangerous they are. Do you think he'll ever get parole? No. His risk profile is off the charts. When you consider the multiple homicides, the manner in which they occurred, as well as the sexual assault, cases in which he pled guilty and was convicted of, his profile is so off the charts that there is vir virtually no way that I could imagine he could be managed in the community safely. And so the parole board will be very cognizant of that going forward. This is an individual who will be behind bars for the rest of his life. And yet he's going to get another hearing if he wants one. He will. And that's appropriate and it's challenging to the victims and their families, but it's appropriate in a democratic society like ours. I and, think it's very good. And what do you say to the families who have talked about how how wrenching this whole process has been. Well, it's challenging and everybody feels their pain, but they also have to understand that the system will work and it will work appropriately, especially in this case, we've seen that the parole was denied, but we, we as a society, it's important to maintain the principles of a democracy and the rule of law and the ability for people to access parole if it is justified in some circumstances. So we feel their pain, but it's necessary for the greater good in my opinion. All right, Joseph Newberger, really nice having your perspective. Thank you. Thank you for having me.